Today I want to talk to you about Matthew 11 verses 2 through 6 which reads, When John, John the Baptist, who was in prison at the time, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, the Christ, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and almost like the most spectacular one of all, the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Well, John has been captured and detained uh, he could be having several thoughts since he has time to think. Maybe he's thinking, well, every good prophet ends up in prison at some time or another. Maybe it's that if he's supposed to be the forerunner, this is going to stall the agenda. Maybe that if Jesus were really the Messiah, John wouldn't have been arrested like this. Or maybe he's thinking, now I'll get a chance to talk to Herod face to face. You know what your mind sorts through when you have time to brood. Interestingly, the only thing we're told are in his thoughts are that he heard what the Christ, Jesus, is doing. And he has questions. He's heard about his cousin's teaching, his miracles, his popularity. What's the Lamb of God working towards? He asks, oddly enough, are you the one who was to come or should we be expecting someone else? Well, one would think that John the Baptist of all people would understand who Jesus was and accept his style and mission. Yet, for some odd reason, he can't seem to figure out who this guy is or what he's up to. You'd think, duh, if anybody had a skinny on Jesus, it would have been John. I suspect by divine revelation. But instead, he sends some messengers to Jesus asking, uh, are you the guy we're waiting for or is there somebody else? Wow, weird question. Given that Jesus was raising dead people and that John had called him the Lamb of God. You see, but they had a whole mindset about Messiah and Jesus didn't fit in their boxes. Sort of like end times talk now. Everybody's got their opinion and we all have these key little boxes that we make things fit into. Well, Jesus wasn't judging like they thought he should. He wasn't dealing with those Romans like they thought he should. And what's with the miracles? They're supposed to be part of the messianic picture. What's up? What up? Add to that that Jesus had come to be baptized by John, which John didn't understand at all. So you know what? I think Jesus had a knack for pushing everybody's buttons and pushing them beyond their understanding and certainly dropping bombs on their cliches, their categories, their religiosities. Jesus didn't fit into anybody's expectations. But let me propose this. Maybe John understands the nature of prophecy. And when he sees it playing out differently than he expected, he's okay with that. But he wants an inside word. He's not having a crisis of faith, but possibly having a eureka moment. This Jesus man teaching peace, proclaiming the kingdom, doing miracles, doesn't fit into the mold of expectation. And John is in a position that we all fall in matching what we expected in our minds with what we see in life and putting that together with our understandings of God. See, John wants help with that, and I don't blame him. We all want help with that. So Jesus tells him, tell John what you've seen and heard. It's an interesting non-answer. Uh, John seems to already know what people have seen and heard. And Jesus is not providing any new information with that. John already knows everything that Jesus is telling him there, so what's the point? The point is Jesus is alluding to Isaiah 35 verses 3 to 6. That's the point for us. Yes, 
God is coming with vengeance and with divine retribution. But at this point, not to judge the Romans or sinners, but to cast his wrath on sin itself. Jesus is telling John what he has really come to do, to crush sin and bring salvation to people. Look at it this way. People get frustrated with God because he doesn't meet their expectations. They get disappointed, angry, and even fall away. And Jesus is saying, in the process of all that, you're missing what I'm really doing. You're missing what this is all about. Jesus says, I am not here to fill your agenda, even if it's a good one. Instead, Jesus demands that we submit ourselves to his agenda. And most of us, quite frankly, are bad at this game. So open your eyes, open your ears to what God is really up to. Forget everything you know. Listen to the shepherd's voice. The kingdom of God is breaking in on humanity. It comes not with medical and military political healing, but instead with divine power to change everything. See, we, we tend to think in terms of economics, politics, science, and Jesus is saying, think bigger. Stop thinking like a human being and think instead like a child of the king. Whenever we hear Jesus talk, consider very seriously what he says, and then plunge 10 levels deeper. There's always more to what Jesus is talking about. Let's make every minute count.